Hey y'all, it's Diane with Shawcraft One in my old barn door, and um, we're, I'm back with another um, video in the series doing, working with the collages, the collage boards, and um, so this time, um, I started working on this and I thought, oh, I need to video this so that you guys can see how I make it, so I went ahead and I took one of my collage boards and I cut it down to 12 inches yeah, 12 inches um, wide, and then I'm now I'm cutting it down to nine inches um, tall. And what I'm doing, what I want to do is make a journal cover out of this. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make a journal cover. Now I kind of want this to be a themed journal cover, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, I, I want to make this for a specific journal. So now that I've got it kind of cut down to um, the size that I want it, I'm going to just trim it up and, um, you know, get everything kind of even because right now it's not real even. And I think what I'm going to have to do is trim the sides first. And what basically, I'm just going to go a little bit, you know, just have a little bit of the edge over and I just want to trim it off to where everything is straight. That's basically the goal here. Okay. So we're going to go. That way. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half. And I don't think I got this cut exactly the way I wanted it. So, um, but that's okay. Because the main purpose was just to kind of get it cut out of the bigger um, paper bag board so that um, so that I can do what I want to do with it. All right. So now I'm going to go this way and just trim up the bottom and I just want to kind of get the jagged edges away. I'm not, um, you know, cutting a whole lot off of it. Just trying to trim edges right now and get them straight. I so need a new trimmer. I just have not been willing to spend the money on it lately with trying to fix cars and all that good stuff. All right, and then we're gonna trim this up so that it's so that this is even. Okay, now I wanna bring this to the six inch mark over here because I want this to be six inches wide because it's going to be a nine by six journal. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to pull this out and we're going to trim at nine inches. Okay. There we go. Now, if you have pieces that you trim off that are like bigger pieces like this, don't throw them away because you can use them and see how that's coming up a little. And just glue that back down um, with some, well, let's just do it real quick. We'll just glue it down with some Alleen's on the corner edges. Because sometimes, you know, you don't see, on, when you do your collage boards, you don't see where you have edges that are going to be loose unless you cut it. And sometimes it might be loose, like underneath the center of the piece. So that's an easy fix. So we can use this strip for something else. So I'm gonna put this in my scrap pile along with this piece that I cut off because we can use this to make pockets or tucks or whatever. All right, now this piece is coming up a little bit too. So we're gonna need to glue that down. Now you have a great um, cover. Okay, so for like a journal cover. All right, so let me glue this down real quick. Sometimes if you use like shiny book pages, they won't hold as good. So you might have to glue those again. Okay, so we got that glued down. And then I wanted to make these um, particular covers um, so that they would match the journal kits that I have in my shop. So um, I have my little bowl of goodies here and I'm going to decorate this cover with some of my goodies from that kit that I had left over from the kit. 
So I have all these cute, cute little journal cards left over from the kit. So I'm just going to go in and pick a few that I think I might want to decorate this cover with. Now I'm not going to use all of these, but I'm just kind of going through and picking ones that I like and then I can kind of pick through it. Let's see. I mean, I love them all, but I want ones that are kind of going to go with with my cover without overwhelming it. That one's cute. And I'm looking at ones that I think I might can maybe rip around the edge. And I'll show you in just a minute what I mean. And I think that might be just about all of the ones that I want to pick for now. Okay, so now what I want to do is I just want to come over here and look at these and we'll trim them up. Like I always like to get all the white edges off. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of start placing them in different places on the journal cover. Now this one, I think I want to kind of rip around the edges. Y'all, it is so hot today. Like I am just absolutely burning up. My husband just called me. He was, he's going to the grocery store and he said that it's a hundred degrees in the car and it is just so hot. So we're we have like a heat index today, like high heat index. And I'm telling you what, I am so hot. All right, so I might want to put that there. I love the little sunbeam girl. Isn't she so super cute? And I might even do some fussy cutting with her. Not with those scissors, though. And y'all know I don't fussy cut, but... um I'm going to make an attempt at it. <laughs> and I'm not doing a perfect fussy cut. That's that's not what I'm going for. I just want it to be a little bit smaller of a piece, actually. So see, isn't she cute? And I'm just going to place these kind of randomly throughout my journal cover and see if I like them. And if I don't, like this one, I really, really like this one. And I almost think I might want to just make this one like a centerpiece. Hmm. Let me think about it and I'm definitely not going to use all of these but I just wanted a couple of them to be able to kind of place here and there on the cover I'll trim this down a little and maybe put it right here can't decide okay change of plans because actually what I want to do is just do something in the center so we're gonna take all these off <laughs> and that's okay because uh, sometimes you just have to do that all right so what I want to do hang on let me there we go I want to take some of this love love this caramel color old old dictionary and it's just in a you know just like a piece of it but I love the color of it all right and then I want to grab some 
corrugated cardboard, so hang on. Okay, so I've got some corrugated cardboard. And what I want to do is I want to make this a center piece on my journal cover. Okay. So, it's okay if we change plans, right? <laughs> Alright, so I want to kind of rip this. Let me just move the cover out of my way for a second. I just kind of want to rip this around. edge. Okay. I just want to make this a layer. I'm just going to layer it up. Alright, and I want to ink the edge of this. I found my brown ink. <laughs> and I don't really have to ink that edge of this because it's kind of got that brown around it but I don't want any of the white showing so just to knock off the white okay and then let's go ahead and ink around the edge of this one let me get a scrap piece to lay it on okay so we can just go around the edge of this one like this with the brown ink some cheesecloth coming out from under that. So, I have some of this cheesecloth that my sweet friend Laura, I got from her, and it's avocado dyed. And I think this will look good underneath this. Actually, I think I want this underneath this, and then we'll do regular cheesecloth between here. And I'm completely out of my coffee dyed cheesecloth, so I'll show you what I do when I run out and need some in a fix. I have this little mat here. <laughs> I use this when I'm doing my um, jelly plate stuff or mixed media stuff so I'm just gonna but this is like a rubber rubbery mat so stuff don't stick to it so I'm just gonna lay this down and I have this little container here that I have some coffee in just like old coffee I mean it's not old old coffee because I switch it out but and I'm just gonna spray this I'm just gonna wad this up in a little ball and I'm just gonna spray it with that coffee spray and just coffee dye it real quick Okay, and then we're just going to swish it around a little bit, straighten it back out, and then I'm going to take, I have this little cloth here that I wipe all my mixed media paints and stuff on, so I'm just going to lay it in this little cloth and just kind of dry it a little and try and squeeze as much of the coffee out as I can. Dry my mat. I need to clean this mat. And then I am going to lay this out flat. And I'm just going to dry it with my blow dryer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to pause the camera though so um, you don't have to listen to my dryer. So hang on a second. Okay, so I've got it dried. I don't have a heat tool, so I just use a hair dryer, and it works for me. Um, it doesn't work for everything, like if you're going to do like embossing powders and stuff. I don't think it would work real well for that, but <laughs> it works in a pinch. Okay, so I'm just going to lay my picture on top of here, and I'm just going to cut out a piece of cheesecloth. And we'll get rid of this mat, because we don't need him now. 
And then I'm just going to lay this here. And then I'm going to pull this and lay him underneath. All right, let's pull him up a little. I'm just trying to get my cheesecloth settled where I want it to go. Okay, I'm going to put that there like that. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the center of this because I want to stitch around it. Of course it's pulled it off. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the center. Stick him down. And then... We'll trim around our cheesecloth because I don't want too much cheesecloth. You know, I don't want it to hide the stuff that's underneath because the whole main thing is for it to be a layer. Why are you sticking? Okay. And I'm just going to kind of ravel this up a little. And then after you sew it, you can ravel it more. All right, and then I'm gonna take this piece here and I'm gonna lay this on top of this piece. And we're gonna trim this a piece out. Okay. Okay. Now, what I wanna do with this is I kind of want to ravel up the edges. I don't want them to be perfect edges. So we're just going to ravel it a little. It doesn't matter if some of the strings come out. I just kind of want it to look a little more tattered. Okay, dump all of those, and then we're going to put this here, and I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine, and I'm going to stitch around in a couple of places. So, instead of bringing the sewing machine over here, because that would be a pain, I'm going to take it over there, and I'll be right back. Okay, now I have that stitched together, and I kind of messed up, and I stitched over my cheesecloth. I should have stitched under it, but that's okay, because I actually like... The way it looks so I think that's what we call a happy accident so now we're just going to um, pick up that cheesecloth a little so it kind of pokes up a little because that's kind of what we want all right and then I'm going to take my corrugated cardboard and I'm going to put this on top of my corrugated cardboard and we're going to cut it out I'm just going to cut a big piece out until I can kind of get it measured the way I want it measured first. Okay, so I might go this way with it. Yeah, I think I'll go that way with it. Okay, and then I may go ahead and just glue this down so that I don't have it moving around while I'm trying to cut it. So I'm going to go ahead and put some, this is Fabri-Tac glue. I just put it in this um, Sugar Bell bottle that my sweet, sweet friend Laura sent me. And oh my goodness, y'all, she told me this would change my life. And it did. I absolutely love this bottle. And I always like to kind of glue on the stitching. Because then, you know, your stitching is not going to come unraveled or anything. So we're just going to put a little bit of this fabric tack on the back here and it will glue really well with this corrugated cardboard and get a good hold so it doesn't come loose from the cardboard. So Lay it down into our cardboard and let it stick. Okay, and then we're going to trim the edge over here. Okay, and 
just trying to decide. I think I might need to trim a little bit more off of this edge, just a smidge. Here we go. And then I want to ink the edge of my cardboard. Let's get a little ink in there. kind of age it a little and it doesn't matter if it gets on that cheesecloth or not because it's just going to add to it. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to take our cover And we're going to add this to our cover like this. And see, won't that be super cute little cover for a journal? But I think I want some lace. I think I want some lace coming out from underneath the back of it. So let me find some lace. Hang on. Okay, my sweet friend Carol sent me this lace, and I love it. And I think I want to use it underneath this. And I'm just going to do a rough cut. To get a piece off this is probably not the best way to do this but I'm being lazy so y'all just bear with me <laughs> okay all right now I don't want it to overwhelm the cover I always have a hard time telling what's the front and the back of the lace. So do I want it this way or do I want it this way? Because I just want a little bit coming out. Maybe I want it this way. Okay. So what I'm going to do, let's do it this way. There's a reason for that. <laughs> there is a method to my madness this side's a little more straight <laughs> and it just gives me just enough of the um, lace sticking out of it and then we're going to trim this a little bit more I'm just flying by the seat of my pants today with this y'all <laughs> it's okay I promise it'll be okay So I kind of want to put that down on the cover so let's just go ahead and use our Fabri-Tac to do that so I'm just going to put a good layer of Fabri-Tac down on the cover and I'm just going to stick my lace to it still can't tell which is the front and the back of this lace Okay, and then we're going to put some Fabri-Tac on the back of our corrugated cardboard. And I like using the Fabri-Tac because it'll go through that lace and stick real good to everything. So it'll give us a good hold. I'm going to be sure I get my edges real good. Okay. And then we're going to just lay him down here in the center and smush him in. And we'll give it a second to grab hold good. Go ahead and put my top back on my glue. Okay. There we go. And if you have some glue that came out from, you know, if it came out too far, just wipe it off before it dries and you're good to go. Okay, so that's a super cute um, cover for a journal. Now, the inside, you can either put paper on the inside or you can put fabric on the inside and sew around it. 
um, whatever you prefer. Um, and I may come back and do like a, a little snippet video uh, because I think I'm going to put fabric on the inside of this. My strings are sticking to my glue, my extra glue. Let me get a baby wipe. Because baby wipes are everything you need in a craft room. <laughs> All right, let's just wipe that glue off. And the good thing is we already have um, a good seal on our cover because we Mod Podged everything down real good. Okay, there we go. All right. So now we have a cool cover to go with our kits. And I'll show you the kits. I have one here. Okay. Um, so I have these kits in the... Um, in the Etsy shop, in my Etsy shop, and it's got all kinds of cute little journal cards. It's got some vintage Rolodex cards and some vintage goodies in here, some tickets, and I can't even remember what all's in here. Some guest checks and some map stuff, and that's filled with goodies and tags and just fun stuff to play with in a little journal kit. So I have these in the shop, and I wanted to make, um, you know, maybe a few covers to go in the shop too so that if you want to get one of these kits and one of these covers then you can make yourself a whole journal so um, that was kind of the point behind this was to be able to do that so I think real quick um, I, I'm gonna put fabric on the inside cover of this um, and before I do that I am going to make a tie closure um, to be able to tie the journal with so, um, I might, we're at 26 minutes. I may do that in the next video, um, and that way you can see that process. So, for now, we just did the journal cover um, and decorated it. And you can, you can decorate the back if you want to, but I'm just going to leave it like it is. So, in the next video, we'll come back and we'll do the fabric and the tie closure on the inside of the cover so that you can kind of see... Um, a good idea of how I do that. So thank y'all so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. <laughs> Sorry if it was seemed like a, it was a cluster, but hey, that's that's how it happens sometimes when you're crafting. Sometimes things don't come together exactly the way you had in your mind at the time you started, but by the time you finish, it usually turns out super cute like this. So um, please like and subscribe for me if you will, and thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a great day. Big hugs.